Hi everyone, I'm here today with my September book haul. So all of the books I've bought recently or been sent for review, I will list all of the titles in the description box down below. So firstly, last week I made a video called my most anticipated releases for autumn and winter 2020. And in that I included a few books that I hadn't yet hauled, which I'm about to haul here. So because I talked about them in that video, I'm just gonna very quickly talk about them here. And if you would like to know more, you can head over to that one, which I'll link up here and down below. So firstly, I was sent these two books from Gallic Books, and these are part of their Revolutionary Women series, which they're publishing in November. There's gonna be three of them. They are books translated from French, which are feminist, queer writings from the late 1800s and early 1900s and they sound right up my street. I also bought this book which has been published by the British Library. This is called Weird Woods, Tales from the Haunted Forests of Britain, edited by John Miller, which I'm hoping to read around Halloween. Then I bought this, which I buy every year. This is the Forward Book of Poetry 2021, which is a collection of some of the shortlisted and commended poets' work from the Forward Prizes for Poetry, which is my favourite poetry prize in the UK. Then I bought Eat the Buddha by Barbara Demick, which is her latest book. She's the author of Nothing to Envy, which I think is her most popular book, and rightly so, it's, it's brilliant. But this one, instead of looking at North Korea, this is looking at the one particular village in Tibet, and she interviewed lots of different people, has written about their experiences, and I'm sure, like with Nothing to Envy, it will be extremely important. And then... I bought After the Silence by Louise O'Neill, which is her latest book. And it's her first murder mystery thriller. And it's set on an island off the coast of Ireland and we're investigating a murder that took place 10 years ago. And a documentary team have gone to the island to see if they can find any new evidence. So I'm gonna put these on the floor. There we go. And let's talk about books that I haven't spoken about before. So recently I read let me organise these a little bit. Recently I read Outsiders, which is an anthology I've talked about a lot on here because I have a story in it myself and I read through it, loved these stories by the other writers and wanted to read more of their work. So I've already hauled a few short story collections by other authors in that book, but one that I hadn't hauled yet is this one here, which is called Come Sing Anyway. No, Come Let Us Sing Anyway by Leonie Ross, which I know because when I mentioned her when I was reviewing the anthology, many of you have read this and loved it. And it sounds amazing. It says, from headless girls to talking food and threesomes, pretty much anything can happen in these weird, luminous and witty short stories. Ranging in form from flash fiction to intense psychological drama, magical realism, horror and erotica, these strange, clever and frank and sometimes very funny stories can be serious too. And then I also bought the other anthologies that Three of Cups Press, who publish Outsiders, have published because I think they edit together great collections. So they normally publish books on a theme. So the ones they published previously are on anxiety, on relationships, and this one, which draws my attention the most, which is on bodies. Savat Hassin, who also had a story in Outsiders, has a story in On Anxiety, along with Ellie Goldsmith, Sophie McIntosh, Charlene Teo, um, and Ellie Williams as well. And then we've got stories in the other collections by people whose work I think I have never read, apart from So Mayer. Um, no, I've never read any of those people. Oh, this one has a story in from Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is on bodies. But most of the contributors I have never read anything from by. And that really excites me because, as I said, they're very good at editing together collections. And Outsiders introduced me to so many new writers, so I'm hoping that those will too. I was also sent these beautifully published small six books. The director of this press, which is called Red Circle Authors Limited, got in touch to ask if he could send me this series, which they have recently published. It's their Red Circles mini series, which they're going to be continually adding to. I think he had seen my reviews of The Strangers 
press translated pamphlets and also the vlog that I did where I reviewed lots of shorter translated works over the course of a weekend. So these are books that have been translated from Japanese, but they're published in English before they're published in Japanese. And it's a collaboration between a company in Tokyo and one in the UK, I think it's to generate hype surrounding um, Japanese voices. So it's, it's a really interesting premise. Um, these are the six books that they have published already and I will list those in the description box down below. You can go to their website to find out the details. I'm particularly intrigued by this one which is Backlight by Kanji Kanawa which is translated from Japanese by the director of the company who was Richard Nathan. Do you remember I think it was in 2016 there was a young boy who was left in a bear infested Japanese forest by his parents as a form of punishment and then when they went back to get him he wasn't there and he was missing in the woods for I think it was six days. This is a, a book about that. Um, but there are so many different things in here. We've got fairy tale inspired stories. We've got stories about AI. All of these six books, I think, are written by men, but I looked on their website and they have work by women forthcoming, which I'm very excited about. This next book is Pascal Petit's new poetry collection, Tiger Girl. I loved her book, Mama Amazonica, which was about mental health and about the Amazon rainforests. She's great when it comes to uh, eco poetry. This one is not about the Amazon rainforests but it's exploring the jungles of India and it's using Tiger Girl as a grandmother. It says Tiger Girl is the grandmother with her tales of wild tigers but she's also the endangered predators Petite encountered in central India. In exuberant and tender eco poems the saving grace of love in an otherwise bleak childhood is celebrated through spellbinding visions of nature alongside haunting images of poaching and species extinction. Then I have this anthology of short stories which was sent to me by Pegasus Books in the States. It's called Weird Women, classic supernatural fiction by groundbreaking female writers between the years 1852 and 1923. So this is another one for my Halloween TBR which I think is always is it always my largest TBR? It's always large, regardless of whether or not it is the largest. Creepy, gothic, haunted stuff, always just my favourite kind of writing. So it says, while the 19-year-old Mary Shelley may be hailed as the first modern writer of horror, the success of her immortal Frankenstein undoubtedly inspired dozens of female authors who wrote their own evocative, chilling tales. Weird Women, edited by the award-winning anthologist Lisa Morton and Leslie S. Klinger, collects some of the finest tales of terror by authors as legendary as Louisa May Alcott, Frances Hogson Burnett, and Charlotte Perkins Gilman, alongside works of writers who were the bestsellers and critical favourites of their time. Marie Corelli, Ellen Glasgow, Charlotte Riddell, plus lesser-known authors who are deserving of content contemporary recognition. As railroads, industry, cities and technology flourished in the mid-19th century, so did stories exploring the horrors that they unleashed. Curated by Morton and Klinger with an aim to presenting work that has languished in the shadows, all of these exceptional supernatural stories are sure to surprise, delight and frighten today's readers. Speaking of my Halloween TBR, this is The River Within by Karen Powell and this one sounds so atmospheric. It's set in the 1950s. It's about a series of friends who find their childhood friend, Danny Masters, dead in a river that runs through a village in North Yorkshire. They don't know if he jumped or if he was drowned by somebody else. Um, and then it's also about this old manor house that's nearby and the person who runs it, who is called Lady Venetia Richmond. She has no time to dwell on this death. She's newly widowed, she is busy trying to keep the estate together while struggling with death duties and taxation. It's also about nature and the surrounding landscape and it is a retelling of Hamlet. Those are lots of different things that all have to come together but I think it's gonna be beautiful nature writing um, and I'm excited about it. It's published by Europa. I was sent the third and I was gonna say final but it's not. This is the final book in the Pages & Co trilogy by my friend Anna James, as we know it, but she is writing three more books as a separate trilogy, which is set within this world, but stars a different character, who I think we are introduced to in this book. So this is Pages & Co, Tilly and the Map of Stories. The first one was called Tilly and the Book Wanderers, and the second was called Tilly and the Book of Fairy Tales. And it's about Tilly, whose grandparents own a bookshop, and she learns that she can go inside books and she can experience and sometimes change text. So book wanderers can affect the text of any book and that's not a problem. Excuse me, I don't know what my voice is doing today. They can affect the 
storyline of any book so long as it's not a first edition if they change what happens in the plot of a first edition which is kept secret in the British Library then all the subsequent books that have been printed will magically change and they will have changed history it's a really cool premise a couple of poetry collections that I bought because I discovered these poets within anthologies, which is one of the best ways to discover new poets, is The Park of Upside Down Chairs by Alexandra van de Kamp. I read her work in a journal called The Prose Poem Project, and I read her poem in a vlog, and I can't remember the name of that vlog, but I'll link that vlog up here. It was an amazing prose poem. I loved it. It was full of magical realism, and I just wanted to read more of her stuff. And then this is Otherhood by Reginald Shepherd, whose work I discovered in the uh, Naplanta Queer Poets of Colour anthology that I read and really loved, and I spoke about that in another vlog, which I will link in the description box down below too. Megan Hunter, who is the author of The End We Start From, has her new book coming out this month. I pre-ordered it, it is here. This is The Harpy. It is a little bit longer, I think, than The End We Start From, which was very short um, and isn't written in quite the same way, but it still has a lot of fragments to it, which I enjoy. This is about Lucy, who works from home, but devotes her life to the children, to their finely tuned routine and to the house itself, which comforts her like an old sly friend. But then a man calls one afternoon with a shattering message. His wife has been having an affair with Lucy's husband and he wants her to know about it. I won't read the rest of the blurb because I don't want to know more than that. The next book is also one that I pre-ordered and it's called A Ghost in the Throat, which is apparently what I have today by Darina Griffa. And this is about a text that haunts people, uh, a text that is written in blood. Excellent. It says, in the 1700s, an Irish noblewoman, on discovering that her husband has been murdered, drinks handfuls of his blood and composes an extraordinary poem. Oh no, maybe, sorry, she drinks his blood. She doesn't write the poem in blood. That seems like a missed opportunity. <laughs> okay. In the present day, a young mother narrowly avoids tragedy. On encountering the poem, she becomes obsessed with its echoes in her own life and sets out to track down the rest of the poet's story. I also bought Supporting Cast by Kit Wall, which is her new short story collection. I adored her novel, My Name is Leon, especially the audiobook, which was narrated by Lenny Henry and is one of the best audiobooks I've ever listen to. I actually didn't read the blurb of this before buying it because I didn't need to, but in case you need more context, <laughs> which is fair enough, it says, as she walks out of her marriage, a woman remembers the day her husband rescued a boy from drowning, a blind man on his wedding day celebrates the pursuit of love, and a young man leaves prison with only one desire, to see his son again. The most recent episode of Fairy Tales with Jen that I did was a history of Red Riding Hood, and I think the next episode that I do will be an updated look at my fairy tale folktale shelves, which are overflowing over there because I haven't done an updated video and I think about four years and it's definitely more extensive than it was since then and this is one of the books that is going to be shelved over there or put in a pile because I don't know if there's room on the shelf but this is Jewish Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland which has been sent to me for review by the History Press and it says that these are the tales from Jewish slaves working in the tin mines of Cornwall through to the tales of being told in communities today all incorporating the wit and magic of a rich and varied culture successfully integrated into Britain and Ireland. Finally, I was sent this book for review by Harper Collins. It is a YA book, and I don't tend to read much YA these days at all, but I'm super intrigued by this premise. It's called Punching the Air, and it's by Ibi Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. Yusuf Salam is one of the Exonerated Five, and Ibi Zaboy is a prison reform activist and a best-selling author, and together they have created this novel in verse, which is about the school-to-prison pipeline, mass incarceration, and the power of art to save lives. So those are all the books that I have bought recently or been sent for review. I would love to know if you have read any of these or if you have your eye on any of these or any other books that you have bought recently or picked up from the library. Let me know in a comment down below. I hope you're having a good start to the week and I'll speak to you all very soon. Lots of love. Bye.